Hello, my fellow readers. It's iDark777 with another fan fiction reading. As always, a link to the story will be in the description below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell for notifications, leave a comment in the comment section below on your thoughts of the story. And finally, this is my opinion. My opinion is not indicative of everyone in the world, so please respect that. So, the story I'm doing this time is called River of Time by Kitty Midnight. It is a Doctor Who and like, oh my god, this is just so weird. <laughs> I haven't even started the story. It's like, just looking at those two fans, like, this is just... What? <laughs> just so weird. So weird. Okay, so let's... Let's just... Let's just... Let's just get into this catastrophe. From the day we arrived on the planet. And blinking, step into the sun. There's more to see that can never be seen. More to do than... Hold on, hold, hold on, hold on. Oh, so, so, sorry. That's the Slime King. Who cares? Keep going. More to do than ever can be done. There's too far. There's far too much to take in here. More to learn that can ever be known. But the sun rolling high through the sapphire sky keeps great and small and endless flow. Still, river of time. Oh my god! Is this just a song? Is this just a song? <laughs> oh, this. Oh, this is gonna be one of those stories. It's gonna be one of those stories. It's the river of town. No, I just... Oh, no! no! Okay, let's just, let's just... Okay, okay. Keep calm, compose. You can do this. You can do this. So as you soared over the animals, gathering a proud rock, elephants, giraffes, zebras, antelopes, monkeys, birds, and more as far as the eye can see. And it moves through, and it moves us all through despair and hope. The colorful home bill alighted in front of the huge lion Mufasa and bowed. Through faith and love, Mufasa nodded and smiled down on him. Till we find our place, a fluctuating mechanical sound began. Faint at first, and growing louder. It's all blue. Oh my god, it's just. <laughs> oh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be laughing at this entire story, aren't I? It's, oh my god. Okay. Huh? I'm, I'm, I think I'm calm. I'm calm. I'm calm. Mm. A tall blue box began to appear. It's a pussy revving in time with the sound. On the path of winding, the box fully appeared, and a man in a tuxedo stepped out and smiled at Mufasa. His wild air kept in check after much persuasion. In the river, the Time Lord broke into a grin and crouched to hug the lion. The river of time. <laughs> The friends looked up at a lioness cradling her newborn cup. Mufasa walked over and bumped heads with her. The doctor smiled down at baby Simba and shook his sonic screwdriver in front of him. So about it, the doctor broke a fruit over his head. He ripped, oh my god, he's literally just Rafiki. I think that actually, wait a minute. The doctor must face the loss of his friend Mufasa and convince the loss of his friend in the battle for him. It's retelling a Lion King with the doctor in place of her, oh my god. So it's, it's okay. So this story is literally just all the parts of the story with Rafiki, but instead of Rafiki, it's the Doctor. Um. Uh, okay. So he's instead of instead of like saying the Doctor does his own unique things, he's just acting. It's just the Doctor acting like a chimpanzee. No way, not a not a chimpanzee, a baboon, because uh, Rafiki is a baboon. Baboon. <laughs> I'm. Why did that guy send me this story? Because this guy, because I did have one guy like send me all these stories, and this was in it. And oh my god, this is gonna be so painful. The doctor broke a fruit over his head. He rubbed his thumb in the juice and smeared it across Simba's forehead. He grabbed a handful of dust from the ground and sprinkled it over Simba's head. Simba sneezed. Sarabi so stifled a giggle and rested her hand on Mufasa's shoulder. The doctor carefully left his Simba and looked at the proud faces of the cub's parents. He turned away and walked slowly past the tardness to the edge of Pride Rock. I'm just going to skip the song. The, doc uh, this. the doctor helped Simba high above his head for all to see, and it moves us all. Oh, wait. All the animals cheered in the unique animal voices. Monkeys danced and zebras reared in jubilation. A shaft of light broke through the clouds and shone down on the new prince. All the animals bow deeply. Remember, all they all they all bowed because 
Pumbaa farted in the back. The doctor muttered to himself as he used his fingers to paint a simple picture of Simba on the wall inside the TARDIS. He stood back and chuckled to himself. He waved the sudden screwdriver across the picture. Simba, he said as the biolipus particles in the paint lit up, causing the drawing to glow. Mufasa's death is a terrible tragedy. But to lose Simba would barely begun to live, Scarbian. For me, it is a deep personal loss. Sarabi so lowered her head, completely shattered. Zazu laid a wing on her paw. Nala nuzzled her mother's leg, a tear dripping down her face. So, it was with a heavy heart that I whoo, assumed the throne. Get out of the ashes of the tragedy. We shall rise to greet the dawning of a new era, Scar said, jumping onto Pride Rock as a hyena slithered behind him, in which hyen, lion and hyena come together in a great and glorious future. The lions looked on in shock and fear. The hyenas laughed eerily, and their eyes glowed with greed. The doctor watched from a distance through a doorway of the TARDIS. He turned away and closed the door. So wait, the TARDIS is just a tree? Oh, <laughs> kill me. He turned... Just kill me. He turned away and closed the door. He leaned against the console in the middle of the TARDIS. His head lowered. Mufasa had been a faithful and wise companion. He had a corner attached to Symbol 2. He couldn't believe he wasn't there to save them. TARDIS could do a lot, but could he really have saved them from a stampede? Yes! The TARDIS! T -t Time and space! <laughs> I'm not even a doctor fan, and even I know this. He couldn't stop a tear from escaping. He growled at the tear before wiping it away and looking up at the glowing painting of Simba. He sadly waved his sonic screwdriver over it. The light dimmed. The doctor stepped out of the artist. Uh, she had brought him to this place of her own will. He watched the stream of flower petals and leaves flow by the wind. It didn't seem like normal wind or normal flower petals. He reached up and snatched the sample. He looked at them a moment and stepped back inside. He dropped the bits into the small container and, sipped and slipped into the console for the TARDIS to analyze. He looked at the scanner. It registered as normal until something caught his eye. Lion fur. It wouldn't have come from Pride Rock. He pressed some buttons to analyze the lion fur. His eyes went in shock. Symbol? He's alive! He turned to the painting on the wall. He's alive! He left with joy as he grabbed more paint. He left maniacally as he painted a mane under the picture of Symbol. He waved the sonic screwdriver over it, lighting it up again. He grinned at, like a maniac and pumped his fist enthusiastically. It is time! This is just... It's, it's literally just word for word the parts of the mo of Lion King with Mufa with just Rafiki. It's just, it's not, it's not Rafiki. It's the you, you see, da, 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 da. No. Da. please kill me. Just, just, just why? <laughs> uh. You said you'd always be there for me, Simba shouted at the sky. He lowered his head. But you're not! And it's because of me! It's my fault! It's my fault! His great head heaved with stiffle sobs. A doctor watched from a short distance, reclining in a tree, wearing sunglasses, his tie around his forehead, and a stupid grim. We believe why believe timey why me. Molto bene brilliant limey oh. Simba turned to look at him with an annoyed expression. He walked slowly away. His head hung. The doctor dropped out of the tree and watched him, grinning from ear to ear. Simba walked across the log and sat halfway, looking gloomily in the water below. The doctor tossed a rock into Simba's reflection. Simba looked up at him with frustration. Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey, multiple benny, brilliant by me, the doctor chanted, stumbling drunkenly. Simba rolled his eyes. Come on, cut that out, he said, getting up to leave. Can't cut it out. It'll grow right back, the doctor said, following him. Simba tried to walk away from him, but the doctor kept following with a wacky grin. Creepy little guy, Simba said to himself. Will you stop following me? Who are you? The doctor leaned into Simba's face. The question is, who are you? Simba opened his mouth to retort, but looked away sadly. Thought I knew. Now I'm not so sure. Well, I know who you are. Come here. It's a secret. The doctor pulled Simba's ear and leaned in the whisper. Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. 
Simba pulled away sharply. Moto Benny billion by me, she, the doctor finished, stumbling away. Enough already! What's that supposed to mean, Simba asked. The doctor pointed at Simba. It means you're a madman, he pointed himself. And I'm not, he chuckled. I think you're a little confused, Simba said through his che teeth as he walked away. The doctor popped out of the grass in front of him, pull pushing his nose with his finger. Wrong. I'm not the one who's confused. You don't even know who you are. Oh, and I suppose you do, Simba said, walking by a tall loot box. Sure do. You're Mufasa's boy, the doctor said. Simba stopped. He turned to look at the doctor in shock. Bye, <laughs> the doctor said, stepping into the TARDIS. It began to disappear. Hey, wait, the Simba shouted. The TARDIS reappeared and the, doctor op and the door opened with a crack, painting a pitch of light on the grass. Simba stepped inside and looked around and all. His lion's eyes scanned the huge wound, taken in the off-world technology. He had more important things to worry about. He walked to the doctor, leaning against the console in the middle, suddenly sober. His eyes closed and his tie down. You knew my father? Simba asked. Correction. I know your father, the doctor said without opening. Okay, are we going to at least get changed? Are we going to change something? Are we going to change? Simba looked away and lowered his head. The doctor looked at him. I had to tell you this, but he died. A long time ago, Simba said. Nope. Wrong again, Doctor said, running to the other side of the council. He's alive, and I'll show you to, and I'll show you him to you. You'll follow the old doctor, Alice. The doctor fired up the TARDIS. Simba crouched, his ears pinned back as the TARDIS shook. He slowly relaxed as the spaceship landing. The doctor ran to the door and opened it. Look down there, he whispered. Simba ran to the door, happy to get out of the box of weirdness, but stopped, realizing he was going to see his father. He took a deep breath and set out the TARDIS. He walked through some reeds and stopped. Oh my gosh. And stopped at the edge of a rock hanging over a pool. He crouched and looked into the pool. He sat up, disappointed. It's not my father. It's just not my it's just my it's just my reflection. Yeah, the doctor said, laying a hand on Simba's head. Look harder. He pointed to the water. Simba looked harder. He concentrated on his reflection. His eyes widened as the reflection changed to one of his father. You see, the doctor asked. He lives in you. Simba, a voice from the sky whispered. Simba looked up. Father? A cloud rolled unnaturally quickly through the sky. It bellowed into the shape of a lion. Slowly, the outline and details of Mufasa appeared, standing proudly in the sky. The wind blew Simba's mane wildly. Simba. Ah, uh, you have forgotten me, Mufasa's voice rumbled. No! How could I? You... Have forgotten who you are, and so forgotten me. Look inside yourself, Simba. You're more than what you have become. You must take your place in the river of time. How can I go back? I'm not who I used to be. Remember who you are, my son, and the one true king. Remember who you are. Mufasa's face began to fade. No, please, don't remember me. Remember, Simba chased after the fading image. Father, remember, don't leave me. Remember, Simba came to rest on a hill, staring at the sky. The breeze, the breeze blew the grass, and his mane fluttered in the wind. Who was that? The doctor questioned, walking up to him. The weather, he chuckled. Very peculiar, don't you think? Yeah, Simba answered. Looks like the winds are changing. Ah. Change is good, the doctor said, seeing the exact words he needed him, he himself needed to hear. Yeah, it's not easy, Simba said. I know what I have to do, but going back means I have to face my past. I've been running from it for so long. Doctor buzzed his sonic screwdriver at the piercing pitch in Simba's ear. Simba jerked his head away. Ow, gee, what was that for? It doesn't matter. It's in the past, the doctor said. Still hurt, Simba said, rubbing his ear. Ah, yes. Past can hurt. The way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it. Once again, everything himself he himself needed to hear. The doctor whicked out his sonic screwdriver again, but Simba ducked. Ha! You see? Now what are you gonna do? First, I'm gonna take a, your stick. It's a screwdriver, not stick. <laughs> although I, I think, although probably likely Simba probably doesn't know it's not it's not a stick. He just looks at it, sees it's pointy, thinks stick. Stick <laughs> mine. Simba lunged at the doctor's hand, his teeth bared. The doctor flinched away, and Simba caught the sonic screwdriver in his teeth and then threw it aside. No, 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 careful, the doctor ran after it. Sonic screwdriver. He found it in the grass and picked it up. It's a delicate technological. He looked up to see Simba running away. Oi! 
Where are you going? Go and back, Simba called. Brilliant! Go on! Get out of here! The doctor laughed and hollered with joy. At least his failures allowed him to help someone else avoid the same mistakes. Have you guys seen Simba? Nala asked Timon and Pumbaa. I thought he was with you! Tim uh, Timon said, holding a head, hand to his head. He was. But now I can't find him. Where is he? Nala asked. You won't find him here, the doctor said, mysteriously appearing from nowhere. He left and bowed. The king has returned. Just give me, just give me a second. Simba ran across Pride Rock, knocking hyenas off both sides. He clawed off one, one off his back and knocked another down. Hyena jumped from above and bit Simba's neck. Simba reared and roared. A shoe smacked the hyena in the face and he fell off. Simba looked up and saw the doctor with only one shoe. Doctor let out a war cry and jumped onto the battle. Hyenas formed a ring around him. They rushed toward him. He punched and kicked him, trying to remember his old Venusian and Aikido. Hyenas lay unconscious in a circle around him. He looked at his feet. I looked off with one shoe. He pulled off his other shoe and threw it out over his shoulder, where he smacked one last approaching hanging in the face. He wiggled his toes. Bear foot on Pride Rock! Simba and Sarabi bumped heads in the rain. Nala stepped towards Simba and they nuzzled each other. Doctor gently cleared his throat. The lions looked up at him. He motioned toward Pride Rock. Uh, the doctor stepped back and laid his hand on Simba's shoulder. It is time, he said. Simba turned and walked majestically up Pride Rock. Rain, rain streamed off his fur and his rich, thick mane hung heavy with water. He stood like the king he was and held his head high. He stood at the top and looked into the sky, rain pelting his face. The clouds parted, revealing the stars. Remember... <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> I thought this said repeat for a second. It's like, oh, come on! He <laughs> couldn't even finish it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, this story is going to be the death of me. Simba looked inside himself. He knew who he was. He was Mufasa's son, and the one true king. He unleashed a mighty roar from deep inside his soul that spread across the Pride Lands. The lioness roared with him. The doctor gave it his best shot. Simba roared again, cleansing the land once more. The doctor walked between Simba and Nala, holding their newborn uh, daughter, Kiara. The artist stood in the background. The river... The stories... Kill me. One. Just... Like, okay, okay, let me just, let me get the criticism over with. If, if at least the story did something different, like instead of one for one, just doing Rafiki's parts with the doctor, if they did something, if they added something like, oh, why is the doctor there? Or better yet, what was the author on? <laughs> Oh, I'm just, no, no, just, just no. I, I just, uh, why? One, one out of five. Just, just no. Just add, just, what to add? Just add anything. Just, just change it. Don't make it one for one. Oh, pain. This is what I get for coming back after finishing that tower defense game. <laughs>